And we are back, and we just finished watching all the old knives from 2022, rated R with a runtime of one hour and 41 minutes. This is directed by Janice Metz, with screenplay screenplay credits to Olin Steinhauer, based on the book by Olin Steinhauer. This tells the story of Henry, played by Chris Pine, who is tasked with trying to find out who was the mole in this division of the CIA when a terrorist group takes over a plane and winds up tragically killing 120 people. Yep. Uh, in it, Chris Pine finds out that his old lover, Cecilia, played by Thandie Newton, is, a prime, is a prime suspect in the case. And he's in a race against time to try to figure out what's what, who's behind all of this. And where to go from here? I wouldn't say it's really a race against time. Well, kind of because, like it's the not, Lawrence not, Fishburne it's not like character, he has to clear her before oh she's going to die in two weeks, and we're going to clear her before then. It's, it's not like that. Well, I think it's in in the sense that there's an urgency here because the the Lawrence Fishburne character basically says, "I need to know that you can do what you need to do because we can't have an embarrassment like this come out." Well, I think basically he said since this thing is this is closed, there's not going to be any kind of trial. So uh, when you find Chris, a person, Chris Pines, Chris Pines like, well, well, what does that mean? And and Lawrence Fishburne is basically like, you know damn well what that means, right? Because he says, and are you, you going to say it? And he's like, no. Yeah, he's like, are you going to say it? And Lawrence Fishburne's like, no. So it, the 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 verdict is, if she's guilty, if you find out she's guilty, kill her on the spot. You got to kill her, or have her killed. And Chris Pine's line of profession is he's, I guess he... he a fixer? He fi Yeah, he's a fixer, and he, he'll arrange for that to happen. But obviously this doesn't, this isn't going to be like a, a, a like blow her up in some spectacular fashion. It's, uh -huh. it's going to be like, obviously, this, this, this needs to be kept on the down low. We, we, we need to make sure that... This doesn't come out, but we are cleaning up our loose ends. Right, because right. So it, there is a sense of urgency here. I wouldn't say ur urgency in, in that there's like a deadline. I mean, he really has... This actually, this is a kind of a, a slow burn of a movie in that there's no action. Not really, there's no. no. There's no action in this movie. There's a lot of storytelling. There's a lot and of storytelling, and a lot of it is basically two people sitting across from each other in a restaurant hashing out the details of this mystery this who done it mm -hmm. of who will who is the mole because there's there's a cast of suspects mm -hmm. uh some of them are non-entities at all you don't really know much about them other than their name others oh, there's suspicious activity regarding them mainly jonathan price there's also the guy who killed himself and Owen. Yeah, that maybe he was involved in it somehow. The random other characters, like the anal retentive guy. Who was related to like a government guy and government untouchable. And untouchable. There's little pieces of information that are revealed throughout the story that give more detail to the characters' backgrounds that you could piece together and figure out what's going on and why certain things are happening. And I, I thought it was okay. I thought it was good. Yeah. Everybody's motives seemed to make sense which is wonderful in a, in a movie like this because sometimes it's just sort of like well why'd you do it and the reasoning behind it is ah, it's just stupid that doesn't make any sense that everything here made sense to me yeah even like the big reveal when you find out you know oh, this this is this is the person who is actually behind it all and, and why they why did, what, they they did, did. what they did yeah you see realization coming on these people's faces because a lot of people are their motives for the current here and now are you know impacted by impacted that. by the reveals mm -hmm. where w at one point you're like okay i'm gonna do this to this person and this is how it's gonna be and then you find out oh well now you're gonna be okay i guess it has to be done but i don't really want it to be or maybe not want it but i can't believe that this is the reason why this is going on mm -hmm. And that was uh, that. That was good. Everybody's motives are good. I thought uh, Thandi Newton was was good in her part. Uh, Chris Pine was good. In, and really, it's it's a two person movie. I mean, yeah. there's, there's other people: Jonathan Price, Lawrence Fishburne. But they're secondary they're to those. They're really two. secondary to those two. They have very few scenes. 
I think it all worked. And it was nicely shot. Um, Beautifully. Yeah. Great production values on this. Great production values. I mean, you you come to like sort of like figure it out as you go along, which is nice. I, I felt like a lot of it was predictable. I think yeah, you, we you could, kind of figured out as you, it was going, like, oh, this is going to happen. Right, oh, this but it is wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't really from the get go. No, you know, you, no. You definitely, I think as the story as progresses, the clues, as the clues are are chipped out, you're able to figure out how it goes or how it how it works. It's it's not going to tax your brain too much. No. It's not going to be. You're not going to be like, what? That doesn't make any sense. It this, all it all makes sense. You may get surprised. I mean, some you may not. Who knows? Maybe you won't figure it out. But even if you do, it's still it's still entertaining. This is tagged as a mystery thriller, which I think is what you said. It's more. Of like I would a say. Whodunit. I would say more of a mystery than a thriller because I. Yeah, the action sequences there aren't really... There wasn't really any... Was yeah. there an action sequence in this Not movie? really, no. I mean, somebody gets shot. There's, like, terror on the plane. Right. But it's not like as though Chris Pine is leaping through windows and engaging in car chases. Right, right, right. It's pretty much just him walking into rooms and talking to people. There's right. not even, like, any scenes of, like, brutal interrogations where he's pummeling someone to get information out right, of them. Right, right, right. It's pretty much just, like, can you help me? And most of the violence occurs off screen except for the passenger being shot as kind of, like, a tell even, to the even, authorities, even that, like, you need to take us seriously by the terrorists. Yeah, even, even that is not graphic in any way. Right, it's, it's, it's not... Just, you see the, the back of the person and bang, bang, and the person... Well, actually, no, you see they pan to Thandie Newton and you hear the gunshot and you see her wincing. You don't see the person get shot. You may be talking about a totally different scene. I'm talking about the stewardess getting shot. Oh, that one. Okay. I was talking about the the person that was on the plane that got sold. Oh, oh. That I is forgot like, about that, the... that is such a far distance away yeah. shot that you don't really see anything you just see you hear a gunshot and you see somebody fall out of a, a, a door on a plane yeah and not like into air he just falls on the ground you know which is probably worse than if he just flew out the window but yeah the plane's on the ground the entire time this yeah i mean this is this is a solid uh, it's not gonna win any awards it's not like you said it's not gonna tax your brain it's entertaining it was an it's hour a, and 41 minutes. It's a good mystery. Decently spent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a I would have, I, I personally would have liked a little bit more action, but that's just me. I think we're just used to that sort of thing, especially when they tag thriller onto something. Right, right. Now, this was, this was just a mystery. I never once, I mean, maybe at the very end, you're kind of wondering, oh, is somebody really in some peril here? Mm-hmm. But it was never a, a point where, like, somebody's, like, being chased or, or, or hiding for their life. The killer is running about trying to get them. Mm -hmm. Even, like, when you see the, the person who is a, a killer, it's – they're not doing anything menacing. They're washing their hands in the bathroom. <laughs> right, right, right. It's just like, okay. Basically, the person's there, and they're just like, hey, I'm here. Just let me know if you need me. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. like the nicest killer ever. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna do anything unless you tell me to. Right, right. And uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. Even even when the 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 final when there is a final killing, it's not really, it's not gory at all. No, it's like no, a, not uh, at all, not he, at all. He got a nosebleed. I, I, I'm I'm, I was looking at the IMDb. Uh, I guess picture for the poster for this particular film. It says in select theaters and on Prime Video April 8th. So it came out this year a little earlier in the year but it's a fairly new movie. I wonder how a movie like this is judged as far as success. I don't see any stats as far as numbers and I don't remember seeing advertisement too much for this film other than maybe the week or two leading up to the release date. And then it sort of quickly went away. And there's, I'm, again, I'm looking at the IMDb page and it doesn't show me any kind of like box office numbers. So I, some, I wonder how the success of something like this is measured. I mean, this isn't a bad film. You think about thrillers and stuff. I don't know why this came up in conversation recently, but no time to die. Like I would watch this again before i ever watched no time to die yeah probably i we didn't really enjoy no time to die not was, at all it was a, 
really not at all. bad send off for yes. Bond. Yes, right. So again, I I wonder how the success of this film is measured because I think that in normal times. This might have done fairly well. I mean, there's not any big, big box office people in this, but I feel like it would have done okay in the month of April in a in a cinema. Yeah, maybe. I, I, at this point, I think when people think spy, and especially if you're labeling it as a thriller, they would be very disappointed by the lack of action in this movie. I think so too. This, like this is something more of just you know, oh. I like these two, and I'm sitting at home. It's part of my subscription to Prime anyway. <laughs> I'll watch this. Sure, sure, sure. I don't, I don't think anybody was like, wow, Chris Pine and Andy Newton. Yeah. 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 Can't yeah. wait to see all the action and violence and explosions and intrigue. No. I think the R rating is more for nudity and implied sexual contact. Yeah. I there's, I, there's, a, there's butts, like a curse word here and butts there. And, butts and boobs. Yeah, and there's implied uh there's a there's a legit sex, sex scene, scene in it yeah, right like, right like, i mean it's not the most graphic sex scene i've ever no, seen no no this isn't but, the 80s anymore yes but uh yeah there was you know it's not don't look now <laughs> <laughs> he didn't bust out the sutherland he didn't get no. his arm somehow behind her head well i don't making don't strange even, faces yeah i can't <laughs> believe that movie is so revered oh whatever <laughs> But this was decent. I, I felt like this, the the writing in it was decent. I felt like all the performances were strong. And I agree with you. I think Pine and, and Newton carry the film. It's it's mostly about them. It's interesting when you see a quote unquote thriller that doesn't really have action, but it's mostly motivated by storytelling, like like yeah. this is. It, yeah, it this sort is, of this reminded is, this me is, of this is rare. Yeah, this is, you don't see this much. As I was watching it, I was uh, thinking about uh, the vast of night, which is mostly just talking heads, yeah. and 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 that's how the story gets propelled. And in this, again, like you said, it's just two people sitting across from each other having a meal, and a lot of flashbacks to kind of putting the puzzle together of what this story is. At at one point, I thought that I wasn't going to like this film because. I feel like that's a mechanism that's sometimes overused and sometimes it can get confusing because you don't understand the timeline. But I think here it was it was handled well enough that you can sort of differentiate when things were happening. I think at one point, I can't remember when, I turned to you and I was like, well, this happened before such and such, right? Yeah, when Chris Pine goes to interview uh, Jonathan Price. Right, right. says two weeks before. Right, right. It's two weeks before something that happened. I guess running into her or meeting, yeah, yeah, yeah. making the date to meet with making her. Date to, yeah. So and plus you're also dealing with eight years ago, those flashbacks. Right. So right. Which dealing, is when the actual with, event happened. Yeah. You're juggling in the movie. You're, you're basically juggling. There's three timelines and then there's actually a timeline even before that. Right. Right. And you could sort of tell by how uh, Chris hair. Pine's hair is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's like yes. The oldest timeline. It's short. Yes. And it's all sh shaggy eight years ago. And it's a little bit more clean cut. Cut, yes. Uh, two weeks ago, and then you know yeah. he's all spiffed up by the final. Yes, because he wants final. to look good for Thandy, obviously. Yeah, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's, they, they do have that relationship. If you were going to give this a number between one and ten, what would you give it? I'd give it a seven. A seven. Yeah. Interesting. I was going to go for a six, six and a half. It wasn't the worst thing I'd ever seen, and it, it kept my interest. I felt like. It kept my interest enough in the film, but I did catch myself getting up to refill my snacks and, and stuff like that without the benefit of you pausing it. Although at one point, I think I was invested in the story when I was making all this popcorn and I was like, okay, pause that. Yeah, yeah I'd, give it, I'd give it a seven. I mean, it's it's like a flat seven. It, it's, yeah. it's good. Yeah. No, 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 it's good. It's it, Again, it's not the worst thing I ever saw. Six to I, me is okay. Yeah. Seven to seven is good. I, I just feel like it lacked and I think it lacked again like kind of what you said when you when you think of the word thriller you want something that's a little bit more action based so even if they had had like one scene of a car chase or a gunfight or something give me something right yeah but that didn't somebody, happen here somebody getting a beaten right 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 somebody getting interrogated and, and, and getting wailed on anything anything at that point I feel like 
the thing that really propelled this movie forward was absolutely the two leads. They yeah. were very strong, very good. And in this film, uh, what did we see recently? Oh, I keep going to that awful persuasion movie. <laughs> the chemistry here is palatable. Yes. Yes. And Chris Pine is capable of making facial expressions far beyond what the guy from Persuasion. <laughs> Seriously, that guy's face. Yes, I believe he was like he was like Rocky from Mask. Yes, he he, he couldn't Ooh. he couldn't <laughs> he couldn't move his face. I can't believe he went there. <laughs> um, there is a slight resemblance. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> um, I was going to say that I absolutely believed that. Henry's character eight years ago was in love with Cecilia and yeah. absolutely at that dinner sequence at the end still was still in love with her. And then when you find out the reasons why that things happened the way they did, it, it sort of lent an, an extra dimension to the story, which was kind of interesting because ultimately thriller romance it, I mean, mystery, it's really a love story. Yeah, there, there is that, that, is a big part of it. And she also, Cecilia also was desperately in love with him. Yeah. And then thought about this big betrayal and just walked away from everything. So yeah, it was it was it was well done. It was well done. You know, I I I'll say six and a half. I mean again being the closeted fourteen year old boy that I am inside, I would have liked at least some sort of action y well, I, piece. I, I... I feel like the way this was written, it wouldn't have fit. Possibly, possibly, and this yeah, is based on know. a book, yeah. so I don't, I don't know. And I think if, the, if a, a car chase or some action scenes would have fit in this movie, especially the what they were going for. They were really going for a, a well, sort think, of a well, who it with uh, oh. a complicated relationship between the two leads, where. You're you're basically sort of like being led to believe that one that that the that Dandy Newton is responsible or possibly responsible for the deaths of all these people on this on this plane. But I think it it would have broken up the story to have something kind of shocking like that. Even like when Ilyas was telling his story about being not being able to see the sun for six months. That would have been the perfect like you want to throw in a flashback, right? Throw in a flashback there. Uh, you could have done that. I don't know if it would have. He could have. It could have. It could have just been a, like a, I, a, I, a montage. Him talking over like it, I, explaining what happened, and I, that's where I would have put it. I don't think it was been, would have been necessary because it really showed it like when you when you have these things in a thriller it's like okay this is happening now it's not really i don't know it, it, having just like a random montage of violence and a flashback doesn't really add anything to the story no but it it, it creates depth to the character and it makes you understand why Ilias became how did, he became you don't need that depth because the depth is all in the performance of him telling this story. Sometimes somebody just telling a story is all you need. You you just you just need that. All right. Well, fair enough. Well, I I if get it, what you're it, saying, but I was, think it would have been more impactful had it been filmed the other way. But well, obviously, Amazon isn't asking for my opinion on their well, project. Well, all, so. I, all I'm saying is that the way in the structure of this movie, this particular movie. It would have been out of place because it's just, it's just like oh we have like this talking head thriller not I mean not thriller talking head uh, mystery movie and then suddenly it's like a flashback with a lot of violence in it that really doesn't it, it doesn't add it, it's not part of the thriller the, the violence and, and action in a thriller is all like oh my god what's the hero gonna do the, the hero is is in trouble the hero is in trouble that's where that stuff pays off in the thriller part of a thriller just having a brutal thing in a mystery movie where there's it's not present anywhere else in the rest of the movie it just i don't know it, it, it's it, it's completely out of place this is more of like i don't agree this is more of of people talking you know what i mean it, it doesn't it doesn't go with that 
some degree. And, but and like that's in, just in me. some in some cases, and even even in a film that has like certain action sequences, you wouldn't put like the flashback in there of somebody describing that. Like seriously, how? Imagine if they put flashbacks in the 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 Quint scene in Jaws, where he's talking about the people in the war. That's different. Your Shaw's go- delivery and the dialogue of that didn't need it. Right. That's what I'm saying. You don't Did need Did you it. think that Ilias's dialogue and delivery here couldn't have been pepped up a little? I didn't need it. Hmm. I didn't need it. I guess I did. Yeah. Anyway. Six and a half. I mean, you're, you're, you're telling me that this man's become radicalized and rightly so. I mean, I'm not taking away from his own nightmarish ordeal in this whole thing, but make the audience realize why this person is who they became is all I'm saying. You understand Henry's motivations for things, but do you really comprehend Ilias's situation? Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't him being captured and tortured that that changed him no it was the other stuff it was the death of his daughter Daughter, right right yeah i do i need a flashback of him standing over his daughter while she dies from whatever disease she had is that thrilling <laughs> it's not thrilling but it adds it adds a dimension to the character the <laughs> i understand that but it, it adds a dimension to the character that fleshes it out more that makes the viewer understand it better because you, you're you, seeing why this man became radicalized he was fine in the beginning and he had this great relationship with henry and he even said i almost trusted you i almost believed what you were saying to me all those years ago yeah but that's why you don't need the flashback it's how he feels now it's not what he felt back then it's how he feels now that's important that he's carrying this with him still Mm mm-hmm well, obviously, I mean, you would never get over the death of your child, right. especially one that was right, but didn't uh, have to happen. I personally don't need to see him crying over a dead little girl. Him just saying that is enough. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Well, and especially, and listen, I'm not saying that it doesn't have its part in other types of movies, but this, the way this film, this particular movie was structured, mm-hmm. it would be out of place. It just would be out. It would be completely out of place. I don't, you're, you've, I don't you've know. Set, you've set. You've basically set a tone for the movie. Yes, this and is then, true. And then suddenly you you bust out of the tone because it's just like, yeah, we need we need some kind of action. It's it's like. What did Tiffany have to say about? <laughs> how do you get butts in seats? You gotta have that scene. You gotta have that hook. True, <laughs> but you have the that you're setting a tone. I'm, I'm talking about the overall tone of this thing. Mm-hmm. If if they had more of those other things, if it was peppered in throughout, okay, I w- it wouldn't have stuck out to me. But if you don't, and then you just chuck it in there, it's just like that's a, that was a weird scene to 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 go into such a deep detailed dive of. I feel see, I feel the opposite. I feel that because this movie runs at sort of like this pace, to have it then go would have really even your little upped. hand gesture there is completely out of place. <laughs> <laughs> you have this like steady arc and then suddenly this doink, this big spike of like what what? Yeah. You know, it's it's just weird. It's like I mean, I I, I'm trying to I'm trying, I'm trying to think of a movie where that legitimately happened, and I was just like, "What the hell was that?" I I, I can't off the top of my head, but I'm p- positive I've seen movies where sure, sure, you're watching it and like you're, I don't know, maybe they're trying to like really surprise you or something, and it's just like, well, that was stupid. That really didn't belong there at all. That really took me out of the movie. That would, I mean, I'm not saying that that would have been in this case. I probably would have just let it go. I'm not that nitpicky about crap like that, but it still would have just been like, eh, that's, that seems, uh, that seemed unnecessary. I mean, this, this film seems to be more about showing people reacting emotionally to things. Mm-hmm. Like yes, the, there's like, a ton of close ups. There's a ton of close ups. There's a lot of like, 
like like the people on the plane conveying the terror of the people on the plane and the best thing that they did was showing the kids was showing a, that little girl with the glasses huddled cowering. on the chink yeah, huddled in, in the her corner. chair cowering yeah that was it was perfect as far right. as like showing that right right you know right. just the helplessness it was even more than the than the one he says to the hey grandfather you know you understand why we're you doing understand. this and you see that the grand the the old muslim guy is just like you you are you know, i am ashamed of you people more than that that showed the terror to me more than the stewardess getting shot mm -hmm. that showed the terror and all that was what no there was no violence done to this child right it right. was just a reaction shot right right and that's what i think the tone of this film was relying upon the the, the facials the reactions the way these people uh, emotionally conveyed that oh this is a really bad situation right 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 and letting your mind like r really reaching for your sense of apathy mm -hmm. uh, not apathy empathy <laughs> apathy <laughs> Like digging in, like digging their hooks into your sense of empathy, and like that makes it work. Mm -hmm. If you go to all right, now we're just going to show a montage of of uh, this guy just getting the shit kicked out of him. That's just like okay, I don't know that that just uh, I wouldn't feel as I much felt, apathy as I did I rather feel, than hearing his voice and the expression on his face. I feel like it would have worked only because it's so jarring and you don't expect it. Because most of this movie that, is that, dialogue that, driven and that you just don't expect sto that, storytelling. That's the kind of oh, I didn't expect that to happen. That I don't think adds to the movie. This movie in particular, you could have it in other films, but like I said, it, when you do have that in other films, a tone has already been set. I'm used to you know by that by the point like let's say it was one of those kinds of movies. By the time that scene happened, I would have been. Okay, the, this film has lots of jarring, violent scenes in it, mm -hmm. but that that wasn't this movie. Yeah, it just wouldn't. It would have just been like a bizarre change of tone for just like a what? It wouldn't have even been a minute. It would have been like thirty seconds of just brutality. Uh, that that was that that would have taken me a bit. That would have taken me a bit out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, like I said, I probably would have still given it a seven, but. I'm surprised you gave it higher grade than me. I mean, I, I, I was interested in the story. Like you said, it's not, it's not going to blow your mind with all the twists and turns, but it, it, it fit. It made sense. Yes. And yes. honestly, that's and the what, performances... that's, that's what we want from our fiction. Yeah. Fiction, fiction is harder than real life because fiction has to make sense. Sure. Sure. And which no time to die did not. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know we talk about that movie enough yeah uh, that annoyed I, I, you know, whatever anyway seven Done. seven so i'm gonna give it a six and a half i think that for the production values the story strong the two main leads andy newton and chris pine really really well done really great performances by those two so if you haven't seen it go to prime and check out all the old knives i wonder what that title means i wonder i didn't do a google search i probably should have but i don't know it's a cool sounding name it is yeah it is and the knives right so i'm thinking that there's going to be more action maybe a couple of on-screen deaths so that didn't happen i don't know uh, knives out didn't really have a lot of yes but knives out the the chair so the chair is the oh, chair in yeah, the, yeah, the in chair, that the, in the writer's his, his whatever own, his, his room iron throne there right i mean it made sense and then it comes into play towards the end of the story so well, i in knives out i think it was more that you know everybody you know was fighting so they had their knives out, out sure yeah. sure right Anyway, that's a different movie. I think we already reviewed that one. That we did review, and we we all loved it so <laughs> yes. much. Okay, so seven, six and a half. Definitely, if you, yeah, if you have if, not if, seen if it. In, if you're into, like, a, a nice little light mystery sort of thing with, you know, some, politi some political intrigue. Some nudity. Some nudity, some butts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go check it out. A few curse words, not a lot. I think there might have been, like, two or three tops. Yeah. Nothing, nothing major. Nothing major, yeah. 
Yeah, definitely go check it out. It's streaming currently on Prime. And that's it from us. And we will bid you all a good night. Good night.